Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today I'm going to go be over my musket rapier build. So without further ado, let's get right into that build video. We're going to start off with 300 dex, 110 intelligence, and 34 constitution. And uh, the reason we go 300 dex is since these are both primarily dex getting weapons. So you want to push for that 300 bonus here where after you get a roll dodge, you get a crit. Which is, has a 10 second cooldown. This is a very powerful ability. Since every time you roll dodge, you get a guaranteed crit. That comes in very handy. Plus, then you get this 10% uh, bonus critical on stun or slow targets. This comes from parried or uh, when someone's trapped. This will apply. Or when you powder burn them. This will also apply since I have a perk that slows them when I get a powder burn. Then you have 10% bonus backstab or headshot damage. Once again, this is very easy to proc with the rapier's parry or with the trap. Any headshots on the musket are self-explanatory. They have dodge cost 10 less stamina. It gives us some extra rolls. 5% thrust damage. This is useful since our rapier and our musket both do thrust damage. Even though it's cut in half since we are using a gem. And they have 5% critical chance to hit. This is a very nice to have. Once again, giving us more damage. And then we have 50 intelligence. This, um, this passive is not the most useful, but you more want to go for the 100 intelligence here to get the 10% to critical hit damage. This is very strong since so it applies both to our musket and rapier. Once again, so when we crit, we do 10% more damage. And then we have 34 constitution, and we actually eat food. So when we eat food, we get this all health consumables are 20% stronger. I'll show you the food I am running, but we run con int food for extra damage through int and to hit this nice uh, 50 constitution passive. So right into our armor here, I'm going to go over what I am running. And then I'm going to explain what I think is uh, best in slot and stuff like that. Alright, so I'm running um, basically all dex gear. Except for my uh, boots here, it's dex and imp. We are running a, a medium helmet, light chest, light gloves, medium pants, and light boots. In my opinion, this is the best way to run it. And I, uh, fact, and I armor checked this too, so I'm pretty sure this is the best way to run it. Uh, anyways... Uh, ideally though, you want to get a flat stat since you do get overall more stats when it's flat than when you're getting a split stat. So 13 uh, dex and 8 intelligence here, you would, I would have more stats if it was just flat uh, dex for example. Alright, so we have a 600 gear score hat here. No important perks uh, of note here. But on uh, my, my chest piece here, we do have refreshing fache here. Which reduces the Fashe cooldown by 18% whenever we get a crit, uh, the crit backside with Fashe. And you have Resilient here, which allows Chris to do less damage to us. Uh, both of those are really strong. You generally only want one passive, like a Refreshing Fashe, because I don't believe they stack whatsoever. As you see on my boots, I have it and they don't stack. Uh, and it does, I believe, take the higher value of the two. So just keep that in mind. And then for my gloves here, uh, I have cooldown reduction here, refreshing, which is very strong. And then I have crippling powder burn, which targets hit with powder burns are slow by 23% for 5 seconds. Uh, this is insanely strong since this applies with our attributes and our other musket passives when this actually connects. This is one of the most important uh, armor passives that you can get since it allows you to kite better and it gives you a lot of extra free damage I don't think people uh, realize. Uh, for the best stat, for the best perks you want besides like a perk for your weapons is refreshing and resilience for the crit damage reduction. So it's passive here and uh, refreshing here to give you max CDR. Those are the two most you want. So for uh, a legendary you would want refreshing, uh, resilience, and then a perk for your weapons. For our armor, uh, for our pants here we have 24 dex, 581. It gives us refreshing. And then this one gives us weakened disease, exhaust, and rinse, expires 7.4% faster. I do believe this is the third best passive to get out of the uh, refreshing and uh, resilient. This is probably the next one you would want. Uh, and then for our boots here, we are running Dex Int. Uh, and you ideally, will, like I said before, want just a flat stack because it gives you overall um, attribute points. Uh, another important thing, you do want high gear score because that gives you not only more armor rating, but the more important one to me is the more uh, stats. So like, as you can see, our 591 gives 24 dex. And here a 600 gives 25 dex. So that does help you push for the extra um, attribute bonuses in, uh, in um, these areas. So like, if I had lower gear score, I wouldn't, even, wouldn't be able to get that 10 extra intelligence for set 
uh, per se, and I would be seeing it 98.99. So that's just an example of uh, why gear score actually matters uh, in this game. Not only just the armor values, but how much attributes they give you. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's also very expensive to roll for this type of stuff since you do need all legendary stuff. So just keep that in mind. This is not a very cheap thing to do. So if you are going to roll for high gear score stuff, I recommend making sure first you have um, 25, uh, the right stats like dex or uh, int before you start rolling for perks and rolling and rolling and rolling and hoping you get the, the correct attribute onto your armor. I just got luckier. I think I rolled uh, to get these three pieces of armor. I rolled roughly over 20 pieces of gear to get these three so just keep that in mind to how many times i had to roll uh so it, it is quite a bit of mats you are using so if you guys don't have a lot of money i do recommend just grabbing the stat first and then once you have the stat and you start earning more and more money then i recommend rolling for the perks or just wait until you get it from like uh, elite farms or chests like that all right on to our jewelry here we are running a 535 amulet this gives us a cdr and gives us more max health. I think these are two, the two best passives you can get. The other one that is debatable for the healthy passive is the one where you get uh, more healing from all incoming healing effects. Since I do believe that uh, also applies off your potions, so just keep that in mind. I do recommend getting your amulet and uh, ring crafted since it's very hard to get high gear score of these. So if you can buy one off the market, this should relatively be cheap by now or get someone that you know to craft you a high-end ring or something along those lines. And for our ring here, we are running Dex Con. It's a 597, so I kept it here. Plus it has Keen Awareness and Hardy, uh, which are two amazing stats. I think the, uh, the best thing to get when this is gold is Hardy with Keen Awareness and uh, CDR. But with purple, I actually think it's Keen Awareness and CDR, not Hardy. But Hardy is very good as well. So I kept it and then decided to keep rolling. So this is a very good ring. And ideally, once again, you want it to be a flat stat since you get over mo overall more attribute points. So just keep that in mind. And the reason why I don't think thrust damage is better here is because we're running uh, ruby gems. So 50% 50 50 of our damage is converted into fire. Uh, so the thrust, you're only getting half the value as you, were, as you would if you weren't uh, running any in gems in your weapons. That's why I do think the crit comes up on top here. And then for our last one, we're running Ill-Gotten Gain. And this is a 499 gear score. It's very low, I know, but it has Refreshing Toast and Regeneration, which are the, by far the best two passives you can roll on an earring. And that Refreshing Toast passive is massive uh, to have since that reduces our pop cooldown by a considerable amount, which gives us a lot more sustain in fights, which allows us to outheal people and keep up our potions and our HP, which is really important. And then the toast at the bottom there is just a nice thing so I can save some money on some potions. But that's not that's not the main one. It's definitely refreshing toast and regeneration. Uh, I recommend farming this. It's very good. You can also replace the gem, I am pretty sure, as you can see here. I just haven't felt like doing it. I did try and roll for higher earrings, but I didn't get any good ones. So I just kept ended up keeping this. So I do recommend if you are short for cash, you just go and farm this. Since it's really good, the only thing you're lacking on is those extra stats. Uh... And um, at the gear score, since this this should be your only con, that's why it's, it's my only con piece of jewelry, it's because I have to have it con. And for gems, I recommend running either uh, Onyx, Malachite, Diamond, or Opal. Uh, the way I do it is I look at the bottom here. So physical, I have more physical than elemental. So that means I probably want more elemental gems. But the meta right now is very heavily physical, not like last patch where maids were a lot more prevalent. So it just depends on the meta as well. I recommend for this patch diamonds since it's a very uh, physical meta. I recommend putting diamonds in most of your gear. But malachites are a lot cheaper. So if you want to go for the cheaper option, I recommend doing the malachites. I don't recommend onyx. Generally, they're the most expensive. So I would, I would stay away from that. Plus, I do think the diamonds are better than the onyx anyways. So I, uh, if you have the money, I recommend diamonds. If not, just run malachites. Since they're probably the cheaper version of the diamond. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it. And now onto our weapons here. I have final respite here. This is from a dungeon. I don't remember if it's Genesis or Lazarus. I cannot remember. So, uh, but we will go on to the perks here. We have vicious here for 11% critical damage and sundering repost. Repost grants Ren reducing the the damage absorption of the target by 14% for 10 seconds. This is very strong, but ideally for best in slot, 
You want stunning repost on your armor since you can get it on your armor. And the perks you ideally want on your rapier is vicious, keen for the extra crit chance. And then the one where you, your light attacks and heavy attacks do like 10% more damage. That's probably the best you can get for a rapier. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for one. I'm pretty sure Lazarus or Genesis does drop a rapier like that. I'm just not 100% sure. And then Infamy, this is dropped from Genesis. This is very strong. This is the one you actually want to be farming for at endgame for the musket. Uh, and it gives you Keen and Vicious. And I'm pretty sure when it's legendary, you get the, the passive where you, your auto attacks deal 10% more damage, which is very powerful. And this gives me a flat 26 dex. This gives me a flat 29 dex. So you can see there's a difference in dex from the gear score. And the gear score also does increase the damage that your weapon deals. So, for example, if I had a 570 musket, it would deal more damage, but it wouldn't have as good as perks. That's why I kept this version, since I had better perks. And I prefer the perks over the little extra damage you would get. The reason why I have a fire gem in this is because I like fire gems. Why not? It doesn't really matter as long as you have an end gem in here. Uh, you probably want a crane, since it's probably the cheapest, and you deal more ja damage to the corrupted. But if you're running like uh, Genesis, then fire is good, because then you can uh, kill the angry earth easier with fire gems. Perks I do not have that I'm going to show you that you guys want is going to be we're going to start off with empowering shooter stance. This is very strong since when you hit a target with shooter stance, grants empowerments, increasing damage time by 22 for three seconds, uh, by 22% for three seconds. This is really strong in open, uh, not in open world, but in dungeons and wars and outposts. We really allowed just to sit there and fire, and this can be, I guess, used in open world. This is a very strong passive to have. I only had one or two of these. And uh, I re-rolled them and I didn't get it. So I'm just left with this. And I have to look at it to remind me that I didn't get it. So I just decided to, you know, roll a dex chest piece instead. And I got Flache on it, so, which was very lucky. Uh, so I was really happy about that. Another one you want is a trap passive. So whenever you throw your traps, you gain movement speed. I don't remember. I think it's a star metal uh, charm for that one. This is the Oracalcum charm for this one. But you want the star metal one. Uh, for the chat one, so whenever you throw a trap, you gain 20% moon. See, that's very useful as well. And then the last passive I don't have that you should want is the Adagio passive for the rapier. So what that allows you to do is whenever you use Adagio, uh, which gives you a flat damage bonus, uh, you don't have to invade forward to get the damage. You can invade any direction, and you'll still get the extra 15% damage increase. That is very strong, and if you can, you should get that one as well. All right, for consumables, we're running 9,634 water because why not? I just like having it in my inventory. Plus, I have nowhere to store it. This weighs like a 1,000 weight. Uh, but anyways, more importantly, we have infused health potions. Uh, these are definitely a must. And then you have a regeneration potion. Once again, definitely a must. You need both of these. Definitely recommend getting them at all the time. Popping them off cooldown, which goes good synergy with our refreshing toast line that would come out 25% faster. Uh, and they have hardy meal here. You just want to use this when you're in uh, line of sight. So you're allowed to recover your missing health whenever you're behind a cover. You just quickly eat this up, uh, stalling for time. Make sure you do have the correct ammo in. So if you're on PvP, I uh, run or a calcum. It does give you like 20% extra damage. So I definitely do recommend running this if you have the gold. And in an outpost and in duels, you have infinite ammo. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're using it. And then for our attribute few, we're running pork belly fried rice here. That gives us 24 con and 16 intelligence for 40 minutes. If you want to know how much this roughly cost me, it was 150 to 200 gold uh, per piece of food. I definitely think it's worth it since we do get that critical 50 con passive, which I think is a must. You could run pure in food here and go for the 15% elemental damage and get some more damage if you really wanted to push your damage to the limit. But I do think the con passive is more important than that. But that is an option if you're like someone who wants to go full glass cannon. That is definitely uh, an option for you. But I prefer having the extra sustain and health since I think at this point my damage is high enough. And I could just use the extra sustain. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, it would mean a lot to me if you guys like, uh, liked and subscribed. So without further ado though, let's get right back into that build video. Alright, let's get right into our rapier now. So for the rapier, the main three abilities we're going to be using are Evade, Flashe, and Repost. These are your main abilities. So let's get right into some of the important passives that I think you guys should know and make sure you guys are using correctly. First one is going to be the Momentum, probably the most important passive here. Whenever you use an ability, you get 30% extra damage on your next light or heavy attack. This is really good uh, since you do basically a lot of free damage. 
just from hitting, uh, just by using an ability. So you got to keep that in mind. You never want to uh, look for an auto or anything unless you have previously used an ability. So I always think it is proper to usually evade first before looking for an auto attack. Since when you do auto, you reduce the ability, uh, the reduce the cooldown of, um, uh, evade here by 30% per auto attack. This is really uh, massive since it allows you to spam evades and get that extra DPS. And if it gives you iframe, so it's just a very nice synergy to have. And then this passive here, Adagio, evading forward gains you 15% increased damage in your next light attack. This is massive, giving you basically 15% increased damage for free. And there's a passive for your armor that I mentioned earlier that you can get where if you can use this in any direction, and this will actually uh, proc. So you can use it left, right, or backwards if you have that perk on your armor, and you will still be getting this damage increase. Swiftness here, giving you extra movement speed, allowing you to kite. Uh, red curtains, whenever you crit, you reduce all your cooldowns by 5%. That's even uh, your cooldowns on your other bar. And you have uh, on guard here, you deal 10% more damage when your target is above 50% HP. Another very useful passive. Refreshing strikes, all rape your cooldowns are reduced by 1% uh, on hit. Fache your dash here, and you get a nice little auto attack at the end of it, allowing you to do, go for some nice burst damage. And they have, and then Repost here. Uh, this is massive since whenever you land it, you become uninterrupted for, th for three seconds. Uh, so you can't be CC by anything, so you can Repost and immediately go for Fache if you're trying to kite away. Uh, they have a priority here where whenever you hit a Repost, you reduce all your abilities cooldown by 20%. This is very strong and very important. Uh, lasting Consequence increases the stun from Repost to 2.5 seconds. From 2 seconds, uh, Repost stun got buffed this patch uh, by a whole 0.5 seconds, which is actually pretty strong. Uh, don't sleep on it. And it also got its cooldown uh, reduced by about 8 or 9 seconds, which is massive. Basically, getting this uh, almost twice as fast is really strong since it allows you to pump out a lot more Repost. allows you to uh, kite more since you're reducing your Bache cooldown by uh, a greater percent, so you'll be using this more. Allows you to become uh, more CC immunity by keeping this up constantly. You always be using a pause whenever you get the opportunity. But it is punishing if you miss it. So just keep that in mind. Overall, I think the Rapier is actually really strong with the buffs it got. So uh, just uh, make sure you guys are using the abilities properly. And you guys will succeed with great success. Let's get right into our musket here. For our musket, we're running Powder Burn, Shooter Stance, and Traps for our abilities. The reason why you run Powder Burn and not Power Shot is because the burn on power to burn does more overall damage than the uh, extra 150% weapon damage you deal from power shot. And the passive you get here where you gain empowerment um, for five by 10% for five seconds. Gets out shine by backdraft here. We're standing center much to shot deal 12% additional damage to their hit by a burning target. So this overall will do more damage than this passive in general. So it's just actually better to get powder burn than power shot. So every time you should be looking to reload your weapon, if you want to do an ability, it should always be Powder Burn and not Power Shot. That's why you take this ability over this one. Uh, for your extra passive here, since I don't have them in the tree, by the way, I do recommend getting Chronic Trauma. Um, the one where, this one here, where you don't lose the fall off damage. And then uh, Empowering Headshot. On successful headshot, gain empowerment, increasing damage up by 10, by 10 for 5 seconds is very useful as well. Uh, shooter stance here. This is just good for overall DPS in wars and outposts or in PvE. So I just generally keep it. We got this passive right here for uh, the extra shots. You can sometimes use this in open world. If uh, you get the trap down on someone, you can immediately go into shooter stance and try and pop some headshots into them. But generally, from what I found, it's just easier to roll behind them with the rapier and just heavy attack them in the back since it does so much damage to them. Uh, I generally find that easier to do and to execute and then trap here the reason why i like to run traps is because uh you get this passive here sent to blood dealing damage uh to a trap tracker heals you for 100 percent this is very strong since it applies both when using the musket and the rapier so it gives you basically free life steal which sometimes is the equivalent of like a whole extra pot which can definitely uh be the difference between life and death another important passive to note is tactical reload so reloading uh after dodging with the musket triggers once every six seconds so generally if you're in an open world scenario or something like that, you start off by already having your powder burn loaded. You shoot the powder burn, intermediately roll dodge, proc, and then reload. And then instead, what you can do is then immediately swap to the rapier here. And then a few seconds will pass and you'll, re and you'll uh, dodge again. And what that 
that will do is that will reload your musket for you already on your other bar. So you don't have to go through the animation again. And that's very strong to use it like that. So that's how you want to be using the musket properly. This passive is basically a must have if you want to use the musket. It basically just unlocks the musket's power spike when you actually get this. Uh, this is also very strong. You deal 10% 10, 10 extra damage to slow, rooted, and stun. That's why we also get the... Um, that powder burn passive on our armor because this now is giving us an, another 10 percent extra damage from them being slowed after hitting our powder burn so with the musket you really want to make sure you are hitting this this gives you a lot of extra damage this is probably your most important ability to hit with this setup and once you hit this you unlock so much more damage so you got to make sure you're consistently hitting this so sometimes it take a few extra seconds to aim this and make sure you get a guaranteed hit don't fire it off too early and then you get double traps here, so you have two traps, a self-explanatory, and you get this passive right here. Lethal combo increases musket down by 20% against targets affected by the trapper tree status effect. This is very strong since when you, they are trapped, they basically take extra free damage. And it's very easy to proc, so it's very useful. And then this, is, uh, this allows you to help execute them. This gives you the haste that you need to help you kiting. Um, this gives you help to stop people who are blocking. And when you hit someone with an active debuff, you gain empowerment once again, and that procs off the powder burn hitting. So hitting your powder burn gives you a lot of extra damage. So just keep that in mind. I don't think you really need sniper uh, to hit those shots. You just got to make sure you're good at aiming and uh, you should be fine. But if you do want to play a very more backline build, then maybe this is uh, more the route you should go. But I like to play solo in open world and outposts and stuff. And with that, I definitely think getting lethal combo is more valuable to a player like me. I'm going to go over a few uh, little tips and tricks you can use. So like I said here, so I already have my powder burn reloaded. So you just do is you just shoot, you reload to get to that immediate thing, and uh, you immediately reload it, and now the tiger is slowed. So then what you can do, so let's say I shoot here, I just switch to my rapier and I roll, and my musket is already going to reload as you can see there. I never reloaded it on the musket bar, I just reload up to the 6 second cooldown which allowed it to, to be procced up for free. So that's why, you know, you like to you load the powder burn, shoot the powder burn, you get the reload, you reload and you immediately swap to the rapier. And that's, you just kite around, stall, you get a nice uh, roll in there and now your mouse gets reloaded for virtually free. So that's a very useful tactic to use. All right, so let's say you wanted to fight this tiger here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk up to him. We're gonna look for a parry. We're gonna parry him, plop down the trap here, roll behind him into the heavy there, getting that amazing amount of damage there that's generally the combo you want to look for when you hit a parry if you don't have the the time i recommend just skipping the trap and just have rolling immediately behind him and going for that nice free heavy which is guaranteed to crit which gives you a lot of free damage if you guys have any questions about the build feel free to ask down in the comments below i'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the build about why i do things or you want something in more detail I'll be happy to answer any of those questions down in the comments below. And without further ado, I got some gameplay I want to show you guys, so stay tuned for that. For our first fight here, we're going to look to connect that nice first shot doing 3k damage with a nice second follow-up shot. We're going to continue to chase him down, connecting with our third. He tries to burn out away, but it doesn't matter. We hit him with that nice last fourth shot. Start by shooting some pot shots into them, connecting with a few hits. I want to connect with this guy as he runs out into the open. I roll to immediately get that reload there, getting another one. I decide to have a Shay onto him here, missing it sadly. I parry too early and almost get killed there. I squeeze out of the gravity while they're just in the nick of time, popping my potion. And I want to kite towards this uneven terrain to use, to use it to our advantage here. As I come closer, I look for a nice shot connecting with that guy. And want to continue to go up onto these rocks here. This is a very nice place since it's uneven terrain. And that favors us. We're going to hit a 3k headshot right there doing a bunch of damage. Pay this guy for R1 so we get a nice heavy there. Finish him off. I accidentally roll down the rocks. We're going to jump back up. Potting up once again here. Walking down a trap here. He walks into it. I get a nice heal from it. He's still in my trap. So I decide to push eight, auto evade him down there. Bursting him down immediately right there. This guy goes for the execute. I roll behind him for that nice backstab doing 5k damage. That is some nutty damage right there. The musket rapier really does some insane amount of damage and it just showed right there doing 5k with just a single backstab. The guy is starting to come into my fort here so I pop into shooter stance, continue to pop some pot shots in this guy. We're going to look to start PSing him down as he tries to sit in his heels now to not die but sadly this is uh, the new patch here. 
Where healings have been nerfed. Thank God that needed to go. Pe healers were unkillable and I really like to see that change. This guy's going to start trying to close the gap between me and him. He destroys my trap there with the hammer. That's a pretty interesting interaction. I'm going to look for a heavy. It connects there. I'm going to parry him for R1 spamming. Charging up another heavy. And getting that and the heavy connects getting that nice finish right try and pop some musket shot as this guy's closing the gap as you can see there once again the hammer destroying the trap so make sure you keep that in mind when you're using the rapier musket the hammer can destroy your traps and that can definitely change up the fight this guy's coming towards my fort i connect with a, almost a 4k headshot right there doing a bunch of damage of a shit onto this guy trying to burst him down they're auto evading him down he tries to sit in his healing circle and get a nice parry there into the heavy into the auto evades there just continuing that dps now they're gonna try to come back into my fort once again here but this is my fort and they're in for the time of their lives as they come towards me here i'm looking to get some more autos in i hit a shot right there getting a nice crit there for shit onto this guy getting some nice auto backstabs getting a parry there into the heavy but the healer is definitely keeping him alive I try and switch my rapier to flash out, but I get pulled back right there, get relatively low, I'm forced to pot up. That's a pretty scary interaction here. He comes up, I try and place down a trap, but sadly I miss it. And he jumps down following me, but that trap connects and I get a nice shot into him, healing for 2k. Very useful right there, I'm going to auto evade this guy down, parry him right there. Getting a nice bit of damage, auto evading, finish him off there, holding block, flashing through the guy right there, dodging the damage, flashing out right there. That was some insane stuff. If I didn't have that Flashay reset right there, I probably would have died. But luckily, I had the opportunity and we took it. Now, as this guy comes towards me, we're going to look for that parry into the heavy there. Getting a 5k heavy once again there. Using that Flashay reset there on the kill cooldown to use that extra mobility to get out of that sticky situation where we're getting shot from the guy on top of the fort. As this guy tries to close the gap there, we hit some two pot shots into him, chunking him down relatively low. We connect our third. But we sadly miss our fourth, but we connect our fifth right there. Confirming the kill. I just walk around this bush here to get that nice finishing blow. For our last fight here, it's me a 1v1 between me and the Void Gauntlet Life Staff user here. I plop down a trap here, roll back, and I get a reload bug here. I'm reloading for virtually ever there, and I sadly don't get to punish him from walking into my trap. I'm looking for a heavy attack here, miss it, auto, start to get the auto evades down, trying to force him out of his healing circle, I flashay onto him, continuing up the pressure, because he's just sitting in his healing circle, he pops out his void gauntlet, so I go for the pair there, connecting, I get a nice trap there, and I try to go into shooter stance, but it bugs out and kicks me out of it immediately, so that's a very int weird interaction, I hope they do end up fixing that, I look for some nice heavy weaving here, I look for another parry, connecting it into that nice backstab there, and I sadly missed the flashe there. That was a pretty bad mistake there, since he would have died if I hit it. But anyways, the fight goes on. He starts sitting in his healing circles, popping all his healing buffs up, and starting to heal back up to full. I decided to pop a powder burn here, since his life staff does relatively no damage, and I thought I could just tank it here. I decided to pot up, trying to get my health back for once here, and trying to auto evade him down here, put the pressure up. I whip my flashay once again there, and he's juking all my abilities here. Nice job to this guy by dodging everything. I whiff my first trap, I, I connect with my second trap, I hit a nice shot right there, healing back up with the traps. Traps are pretty insane since you can heal with them. However, we're going to connect with a nice last auto attack, confirming the kill, and getting that nice juicy XP.